Interesting. It looks like we have a wide mix of um, interactions with our services. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Josh to get things started. All right. Thanks, Robert. Uh, yeah, I'm Josh Farlow, Director of Services for the Americas um, at X-Rite. And we are excited to talk more about our global service and training options with everyone today. Mike, what are your thoughts on the results in this survey? And what can you tell everyone about our global services capabilities? Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for, for attending today. I think um, it's good to see that many of you have had some sort of experience with, with X-Rite service in the past. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more today about how we think about service and, and some of the, the, the new things that are coming in the future. Um, you know, really at the core of, of what we aspire to be is that we want to help our customers better understand and implement color solutions um, in their businesses. And we believe that, that we really have the best combination of experience and expertise um, here at x right to partner with, with customers uh, in kind of three critical phases um, of, the, of the color journey. And so um, it really, it, it first uh, starts with all about learning, and that's where our trusted experts really come into uh, the fold. And, and we really have a collection of, of some of the most trusted uh, color and appearance professionals out there in the market. Um, and, and they do a fantastic job at, at educating uh, uh, new people in the space, but, but also um, some customers that, that have been with us for, for many, many years and, and helping them to, to expand their knowledge base. Uh, secondly, we also look to drive value. And in a big way that we do this um, is we help our customers um, integrate different technologies uh, into their workflows. We also train them on, on how to use it uh, and how to get an ROI on some of the investments that they're making um, in their lab environments, in their QC processes in production, uh, or even in their, in their form formulation uh, processes. And then lastly, we really look to improve quality. Um, and, and really, we, we do this, and we, when we think about this over the life cycle of, of working with our customers. And, and oftentimes we have a decade or, or more of, of working with, with different customers. And uh, we wanna make sure that the technology that you're using uh, from x uh, is in the best possible working order to be able to help you achieve that color consistency and quality uh, that you really aspire for in, in your production processes. Um, so yeah, so great question, Josh. Hopefully that's a good overview of kind of how we think about helping customers and uh, in, in adding a little bit of value um, in, into how they think about color. For sure, thanks. Thanks. Uh, 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 your first, uh, your two, first points, two points speak to the support we provide to help educate and train people on their equipment and workflow. Bernadette, what more can you tell us about this? Sure, Josh. Um, well, like Mike said, we really aim to enable understanding. So when we think about color education, we focus on what that means based on you know, what customers have voiced in terms of challenges they faced in their environment. And really it comes down to a couple things that are important to understand because um, they really drive the need for color education. So first and foremost is color communication. Right. So when we describe color to another person, our mind creates a mental picture of the color which we are trying to communicate. And then that person will formulate their own mental picture of the same color. But that makes the communication of color extremely subjective. So being able to recognize our inability to clearly communicate our color needs using a common language is what drives the need for color education in terms of knowing what tools are out there, uh, what training we have available to help. Um, and then we also have uh, the perception of color, right? So that includes other factors that can affect how we perceive color, such as background effects, uh, color deficiencies, lighting, and even age. 
So being aware of these factors really helps people recognize the opportunities for improvement within their measurement processes. And depending on the level of sophistication required or the workflow, you can craft a color control program based on visual analysis or one that, that takes it a step further and you know, using color measurement instrumentation and software. So despite whatever approach is taken, it's critical that we develop standards and rules that are defined to identify areas for color measurement success. And we have developed a lot of different programs and courses uh, to help educate people from all different levels, right? So from beginner to advanced. And um, we also offer a lot of different flexible options in terms of the delivery of that education and training. We have custom consulting available, and all of these are designed to support and integrate solutions into our customers' processes so we can advise them throughout the entire buying journey. Thanks, Bernadette. Um, now that we have a better understanding of the importance of education and training, Mike, what can you tell us about how we support people to help them maintain the best quality of color management within their workflow. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Josh. This is such a like a, a fundamental um, a piece of, of really um, any sort of technology investment. But but really, whenever it comes, uh, whenever I think about uh, the the, the tests and, and measurement space, um, you know, our devices are measuring color and appearance. Um, in, in helping you make bet, better decisions uh, about your business as it relates to those things. Uh, it, it's really not all that different than, um, you know, leveraging a scale to, to measure weight or, or many other um, different test and measurement equipment that are out there. And, and one similar, you know, quality that, that a lot of those different um, products and solutions have uh, is that over time, uh, they start to drift and and you know that that happens in any sort of like measurement situation uh, and so we really encourage our customers uh, to take advantage of our certification process uh, we recommend it every 12 months so once a year uh, and, and that's really a five-point certification process where we recalibrate the instrument bring it back into a very clearly defined specification um, and, and keep that drift and tolerance level extremely tight. Uh, we also do things like in, inspect and, and clean the instruments uh, during this process. Uh, and, and of course, we, we offer different third-party accreditations like the A2LA or, or ISO uh, certific certificates as needed, as well as a, as a number of, of more regional um uh agencies uh that that we comply with in, in some regions or, or countries of the world um <clears throat> so you know what one area that kind of comes to mind if, if i could use a bit, an example of, of really how some customers have taken advantage of, of using certification and then being able to get on on a, an effective way to um to, to get the most out of the service that, that X-Rite offers. Um, so, so one example is that we have a large customers uh, in, in actually the packaging space that was consistently sending a number of their devices in for uh, repair just due to the environment, as well as sending them in for annual certifications uh, to keep their tolerances tight. Um, our, our service team here was able to work with them to analyze what their service needs are, uh, what types of service requests they most frequently had. Uh, and we put together um, a pretty unique offering for them that allowed them to have access to fast turnaround times, uh, loaner devices, um, and then help, help put them on a preventive maintenance schedule that really worked well um, kind of for their business operation. And, and so we've done this with actually hundreds and, and in some geographies, even over a thousand customers to, to really help them create a, an effective maintenance plan uh, to make sure that they're maintaining that consistency and quality around their color me measurement uh, within, their, within their workflows. 
Uh, interesting. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Mike. That's uh, a really good story. I know we have a lot of customers in, in that space. Um, well, can, Mike, can you tell us a little bit more about services that x offers in different markets and product segments, and also how people can take advantage of these options? Uh, yeah, ab absolutely. So it's, it's a very common question that we get asked, but I, I generally like to break it down into two different service uh, types that x offers. So we offer an on-site or field service at our customers' facilities. Um, and, and this usually includes uh, an inspection, some sort of general cleaning, uh, removing any dust or, or anything like that, a calibration, and then an ISO um, uh, compliance certificate or ATOLA or, or, or all of those sorts of things that we just talked about. Um, and, and we normally offer this you know, on-site service for our larger equipment. So things such as the bench tops that we sell or light booths or even our TAC-7 uh, device that, that really um, captures appearance really well. Um, you know, kind of that, that's one area. The, the other area that, that we really focus on um, servicing equipment is, is that we provide services at one of our many service centers around the world. And so we offer a similar like certification and calibration um, uh, process at our service centers, but we also re, you know offer um, repair and parts replacement out of these facilities as well. Um, <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the locations that we operate in around the world. Um, and, and so let, let's take for example like North America, um, you know. In this space, we really uh, have lots of different capabilities. Uh, one of the biggest ones is that we have the largest um, on-site capability here. Uh, so we can deploy different X-ray professionals on-site very easily um, and on demand as needed. Uh, so, so we do try and, and leverage uh, that capability in that region fairly frequently. Um, as we move down to Latin America and South America, here we actually have over a dozen service partners who have been trained on practically all of our products that, that we sell into those markets um, so that they can provide more local service in the local languages um, to our customer base. Um, another really big market for us is Europe. Um, so we actually have four different, um, or I'm sorry, five different service locations uh, throughout Europe. Uh, you can see them up there on the screen. But we also have a number of field service or on-site professionals that are ready to come to your, facil to your facility um, to meet with you, to, to help you from anything with training um, to technical services like the calibration and certification services like we talked about. Um, and, and provide that service in your local language. You'll, you'll see that's a common theme for us. We want, we want to be as local as we possibly can. Um, the Middle East and Africa, we do operate similar to Latin and South America with partners in those space. Um, they know the countries really well in, in the customer bases and have been, have been working for years to help provide more local service. Um, I think a, a, a region that's really exciting uh, for us moving forward is India. Uh, we opened a brand new state-of-the-art service center in 2019, uh, and we started to scale up some of the operations and, and the number of uh, support personnel that we have in the country. Um, and, and it's just a, it's such a, a growing market uh, that, that we're excited to be able to provide more local service uh, options. Uh, in that country. Currently, we do operate out of uh, Bangalore, India, uh, just as, as a, a point to note. Um, lastly, we have, we have China. So we actually have three different service operations uh, in the greater China market, including Hong Kong. Uh, we do a mix of, of service center services and, and also some on-site services there. Um, and then as we move into Japan, we, we do, we've had a a facility in Tokyo for a number of years uh, have, has really good customer intimacy with some of the larger um, uh, 
car manufacturers in Japan, as, as well as across a number of our product portfolios. Um, and then in Southeast Asia, we actually have over 20 different um, service partners uh, across many different countries within, out, within Southeast Asia. Uh, and, and just one last point, we actually have a close to 50 partners that we work with all across the world um, uh, to help provide local service in local languages. Um, we are looking at some countries that today we don't actually have local service that we're going to be investing uh, in over over the next few years as well. Um, so, so that's a little bit around our geography um, and, and how we're set up today. Wow, that is a significant reach uh, at a global scale. So thank you for sharing that. So Mike and Bernadette, I, I think you'd both say it has been an interesting year to say the least. How has X-Ray Pantone demonstrated innovation in these non-traditional times and what is the future outlook? You're right, Josh. It's definitely been an interesting year. Um, <laughs> the good thing, though, is that because we were limited in offering, you know, face-to-face -face individual or even our in-person classroom style training and education, we were really in a position to accelerate our innovation and transcend our, our portfolio, right? So we actually moved towards new and interactive virtual online classes, um, as well as remote training. And that, that was really designed to help accommodate customers who are not able to travel or be in their work environment. Um, for one of our large customers, though, we, we had a robust strategy in place uh, for custom consulting, and, and that, was, um, that agreement was in place at the beginning of the year. We had to pivot, you know, almost 100% pivot on what we had as an on-site model to conduct a remote audit of existing tools and capabilities. Um, this you know, helped us uncover areas for improvement and efficiency in the workflow. And we've received a lot of feedback that's, that's very positive around that remote um, capability that we have now. And so I think moving forward, what we've learned is that we're, we're gonna continue to innovate in this space and um, you know, help our customers and be as flexible as we can with what we offer for them. Great. No, uh, thank you, Bernadette. I, I think that's a really good uh, summary of, the, of some of the things that we've been able to do uh, here this year. It's a really good example. Um, I, I think one thing that I would love to share with, with this audience is that I'm just very excited uh, for the next few years uh, within our service business and, and how we interact with many of our customers. Um, and, and I think one of the things that makes me really excited is that we're investing a lot of time and financial resources into improving the way uh, that we interact with our customers. And it really breaks down to, into like three critical areas um, that we see it, it, that, that will, will provide more intimacy with, with you all. Uh, the first one is around learning and education. Um, so we desire to still be at the forefront of the color and appearance innovation uh, curve, and, and we position ourselves uh, that way with our experience and our expertise. Um, we know that in 2021, it's been really hard to do face-to-face -face, uh, learning and education. So we actually just made a significant financial investment where we are porting all of our learning to an online environment. Um, so we will still provide face-to-face uh, -face learning that's not going anywhere, uh, but we are, we are rolling out, and you'll see this uh, over the next several months on a very global scale uh, in many different languages, uh, really the biggest and best uh, training and education platform uh, in the color and experience in the color and appearance space. Uh, very excited about that and, and what's coming with that team. The second area that I'm, I'm very excited about is our customer experience. Um, today, I literally in, in Q4, we are making significant investments um, to completely reconstruct our, our administration process 
uh, for whenever customers have issues or need or request service. Uh, so we want to make this experience uh, very automated uh, and easy to navigate uh, online. Uh, we, we realize today that sometimes that can be challenging. Uh, we've gotten a lot of really good customer insights and feedback on ways that we can make it better. Um, and we're moving to a brand new technology platform that will allow us to streamline many of, of these customer uh, interactions that we have um, to help to facilitate um, just a better experience from the first day that you start talking um, to, to Xrite to the uh, you know, 20th year that you're, that you're working with us. Um, and then the last kind of cornerstone uh, that we're excited about for the future is, is our software tech and technology that we're making an investment in. Um, so, so really what this is about is we are investing really significantly in all of our infrastructure uh, within our service centers, as well as our on-site field service software. Uh, we want to make this faster, more robust, and it really allows us to do two things. One is it, is it helps us to improve our turnaround times for our customers. So whenever you do have a problem or you need to have your device or technology maintenance, we can do it much faster than, we, than what we do it today. The second thing that it helps us do is it helps us to increase our capability set. So we want to do more things um, in more regions of the world um, closer to where our customers um, um, operate. And so that is the, the whole goal around um, why and where we're investing uh, today. So that's what's to come here in the next 12 months or so. Um, so lots of new things uh, that we are very excited for. So th thanks for the opportunity to let us to, to let us share so, some of these exciting things for the future. Okay, thanks for the detail and thoughts around that, uh, Mike and Bernadette. It sounds like the team is heavily focused on providing new options for people in terms of education, as well as support to help optimize their color management workflows. Uh, I will now pass over to Robert for questions from our audience. Great, thank you, team. If anyone does have any questions, feel free to submit your question now, and we do have some time to answer your questions. While we wait for questions to come in, I am going to launch another polling question. If you are interested in speaking to someone, whether that's a salesperson or just finding out more information about other services, feel free to answer this question, and we'll be sure to get someone in touch. So I'll give it 30 seconds or so and see if we have any questions coming in. So it looks like one question we have here is, what types of online courses and training do you offer? Uh, sure, Robert, I can take this one. So we offer several courses for a lot of different industries. Um, you know, we have going beyond density. This, this course focuses on achieving measurement-based process control in a print workflow. And we actually are very excited that, you know, we just launched an online course for um, one of our most popular in-person seminar style classes, the Fundamentals of Color and Appearance. And this, you know, interactive course is really for anyone that needs a like foundational or very basic level of color knowledge as it pertains to quality control. So most of our courses actually range anywhere from, I don't know, 45 minutes to several hours of content. And really the best way to find the courses is to go to our website and, and just check out, you know, which ones are the most relevant based on the needs that you have. And then in terms of our remote training, we have a lot of different options there too. So we have hourly options, uh, half day, full day, um, and we can instruct you on how to use your device if you're new to your job or if you just really need, a, you know, a refresher training or are thinking that you might not be leveraging your equipment in the right way or the most efficient way possible. Um, so really, this is just just these options are part of ongoing development that that we have available for everybody. 
what options are available for service contracts? Uh, yeah, I can take that one. Um, yeah, so so good question. So we we offer um, you know three main options today. Uh, we do tier it out into a good, better, best um, uh, t type of approach. So uh, the good option is uh, is is a plan that we call our Net Profiler Plus plan. Um, so so you get access to a software tool called Net Profiler. Um, which, which allows you as a customer to be able to um, kind of self-certify or self-calibrate. And then we also um, include loaners and any break fix that you experience uh, over the duration of the contract would also be covered. Um, uh, the, the second tier up, uh, which is the better, is our Certification Plus plan. Um, and, and that's one that includes break fix, a loaner unit, but then it includes um, the annual X-Rite um, cert five, five point certification process. Um, and that can be done depending on the uh, uh, equipment type, either at your facility uh, or at an X-Rite service center. Um, and, then, and then we kind of have the best option, which, in, which is our premium contract, and it includes all of those things. So you get access to the net profiler, um, you get access to the annual um, manufacturer's five-point certification uh, process, any break, fix, repairs, loaners. Um, and then we also look to prioritize those devices throughout uh, the service experience, uh, ju just as an added benefit as well. Great. I'll take a couple more questions here. Um, here's another one for you, Bernadette, perhaps. Do you have any training programs in Spanish? Um, perhaps you're going to talk about anything that we have coming up or whatnot. Sure. Yeah. So the course that I had just uh, mentioned that is brand new, um, that will be available in Spanish in um, Q1 of next year. So we're putting forth a pretty significant effort in making sure that we are offering more translated content as well as um, you know for any videos that we're doing as part of the courses we're localizing them as well uh, so you know we can make it as you know customer friendly um, as, as we possibly can Perfect. Last question I'm seeing. We have a few questions, but I'm not sure I understand what they're asking, so we will take a few of these offline and get your response, but we'll end with this final question. How do I request service for my device? Oh, yeah. Uh, this one, yeah, very, very easy. So we have, we have three options. Um, we, you can either pick up the phone and call us, um, you can email us or you can go online to our website uh, and, and there's a request uh, portal um, on our on our website as well. Um, so the fastest, you know, all of them are about similar speeds. Um, probably our online will we'll get you the quickest response, um, but the others are, are pretty effective as well. Uh, we have we have associates in practically every geography that um, that will respond in real time. Uh, usually, most of the time, we're, we respond same day. Uh, if not same day, then, then definitely next day. Uh, so, so we try and take, we, we put priority in those new service requests to get them uh, set up and, and feedback to you as soon as, as soon as possible. Perfect. That is actually the last question I am seeing. So we will end here for today. If again, if we didn't get to your question, I will export those out. Um, there was a few, there were a few very specific questions, so I can export those and give them to the team to follow up with you. Um, we will also send a recording to this webinar tomorrow, so look out for that. I just want to say thanks, Josh, Mike, and Bernadette for your time. Thanks everyone for attending, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.